Personal Finance PowerPoint Presentation Health Insurance Costs Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Remember that insurance is part of our long-term risk mitigation strategy where we follow the adage of measure twice, cut once, putting a formal plan in place looking something like this. We set the insurance goals, develop a plan to reach those goals, put the plan in action, review the result, and repeat the process periodically. We're now looking at the cost of the health insurance. Most of this can be found at Investopedia. How much does health insurance cost? which you can find online. Take a look at the references, resources, continue your research from there. This is by Amy Fontinier, updated March 2nd, 2022. How much does health insurance cost? So we've been comparing and contrasting, talking about different kinds of insurance, noting that health insurance can be more complex due to the laws and regulations surrounding it and simply the complexity of health insurance or just the healthcare system in general so we got to wrap our mind around all these different kind of concepts so we could think about what would be the best coverage for us the family and how much would those coverages be costing so how much does health insurance cost across the united states american pay widely different premiums monthly for medical coverage and that's not too unusual to expect for many different things because there's a wide range of differences uh, between costs in general throughout the company throughout the country for a variety of reasons so though these premiums are not determined by gender or pre-existing health conditions thanks to the affordable care act a number of other factors impact what you pay we explore those factors below to help you understand how much you might pay for health insurance and why so it's kind of interesting when we think about this from a legal perspective you kind of say or from a policy perspective we think about these kind of things where we say, oh, the, the Affordable Care Act's gonna make it so the insurance company is gonna force us to give us coverage for things like the like if we have pre-existing conditions. And obviously we could think favorably about that because we would never want to be caught with pre-existing conditions and not be able to get health insurance, for example. But at the same time, we know that the health insurance costs need to be paid some way, somehow by someone. And so whenever these kind of adjustments that happen and whenever we put these laws into place, we add more complexity oftentimes to the health insurance, which somewhere the costs are going to have to hit. They're going to have to show their ugly heads and we'll have to deal with them. So how are they, how are they calculated? 10 factors that affect premiums. So that's the amount you're going to pay, of course, for the health insurance. Many factors that affect how much you pay for health insurance are not within your control. Nonetheless, uh, it's good to have an understanding of what they are. It's good for your own policy conditions and decisions. It's also good for you to be able to understand how things work from a policy perspective so you can vote on it because this is clearly a big political issue in terms of health care and health insurance and whether insurance is a right or a privilege and how and health insurance should be paid for. Should it be market based or should it be a top down kind of approach? How will that affect our, our continued ability to increase our health insurance and be you know the best health insurance that we can we can do our health marketplace to be able to you know fight diseases and so on in the future so here are 10 key factors that affect how much health insurance premiums cost number one state and federal laws legislation dictates what health insurance must cover and how much insurers can charge number two type of insurance whether you are insured by an employer's group plan or by or buy it on your own is a factor in how much you'll pay. So clearly the state laws have to, you know, are gonna have an impact as well as the federal laws. And then uh, we, uh, traditionally we had the coverage that was basically through the employer with the benefits kind of uh, system that would be put in place, possibly given the company uh, benefits, including the group coverage, which can sometimes lower the premiums as well as possible tax benefits. And so there's been kind of changes to that dynamic a bit more as time has passed it, especially since a lot of people don't work for the same company for their whole life like they kind of more often did uh, in the past. So we've got an interesting dynamic there. Number three, income level. Low wage workers tend to pay more through employers, but may pay less through a federal or state exchange due to subsidies. So now on the low income side of things, uh, it was often thought that if you don't have your insurance through an employer, possibly because you're part-time employee or something like that, you might miss out on the on the group insurance through the employer or something in that way. But 
if you buy it yourself, then you might get these subsidies uh, through the marketplace kind of system that is set up, which could be beneficial on that side. So number four, employer size and insurance is usually cheaper at large companies. Why? In part, you would think that they could get the group policies and the group policies would be cheaper if you had a bigger kind of group that they could they can focus their policy calculation on so the bigger companies might then have the benefit of the better premiums and also be able to provide better benefits if they're a good big well-known company uh, to, to incentivize people to work for them but that's kind of like a form of compensation but in any case number five state of residence uh, premium price is very dependent on the state and county so whichever whatever state you're in high cost of living low cost of living for example number six type of community premiums tend to be lower in urban areas than rural ones number seven a uh, county of residence some counties have just one plan while others have more com competition which can help reduce prices now this is one of the other kind of kind of uh, methods or tactics that people argue over to try to lower the premiums so we got these arguments over the health insurance remember that one argument is obviously politicians are going to say i'm just going to make the insurance i'm going to stick it to the insurance companies and make them pay for more stuff right but that's kind of hard to actually do because the costs are going to come out somewhere because you, you, someone's going to have to pay for it uh the, the the other more practical i think long-term method would be like well how can we actually lower the costs in the long run and the two kind of strategies that that people often come up with which are actually diametrically opposed in some ways would one would be we're going to force all insurance to kind of be on a on a one kind of system so that we have a large pool we force people to be insured or pay for insurance so we don't have the free rider effect and that way uh, that might drive down costs because we eliminate the free rider effect and we could get a larger pool maybe and possibly drive down costs that's kind of the thought process with the affordable care act but then parts of that kind of got dismantled with the requirement for the health insurance so it didn't so that whole f like the full plan didn't really go into play the other side would say well no we shouldn't be going to one 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 size fits all plan and try to consolidate everything together under a more of a top down approach we should be having more competition we should be saying that we're going to allow more competition possibly across state lines or for people to have different packages of, a, of an insurance and so on different offers that would specialize towards different groups and so and and in that way the competition would be lowering the cost just in a, on a free market kind of, of of basis so you can see how that will they'll play out from a political side number eight plan type preferred provider organizations those are the ppos and platinum plans through the federal health insurance marketplace tend to cost the most obviously the more expensive plans are going to cost more because they, you get more benefits typically and they're more flexible oftentimes nine the age health insurance rates go up as a policyholder gets older with the large increases after age 55. that would make sense right because from the insurance's perspective they're trying to figure out how often they're going to have to pay out and the premiums will reflect that as you get older you would expect that you're going to have more medical expenses and therefore the insurance will cost more tobacco use premiums for tobacco users cost up to 50 percent more so if you have tobacco use they're going to be they're going to hit that one because there a bunch of studies are saying tobacco is not good apparently and so so uh, that can increase the risk which you can see why they would want to take that into consideration because the payouts will go higher so that would increase the premiums the coverage offered by the employers contributes to several of the biggest factors that determine how much your coverage costs and how comprehensive it is let's take a closer look so this is where it's kind of tied to the employer this is like the more traditional uh, set up how it's been traditionally set up the, the health insurance often being tied to the employer so the employee health insurance premiums if you work for a large company health insurance might cost as much as a new car according to the 2020 employer health benefits survey from Kaiser Family Foundation Kaiser found that average annual premiums for family coverage were 21,342 in 2022 which was nearly identical to the base manufacturer's suggested retail price of a 2022 Honda Civic 22,715. Our workers contributed an average of $5,588 toward the annual cost which means employers picked up 73% of the premium bill 
for a single worker in 2020, the average premium was $7,470. Of that, workers paid $1,243 or 17%. Kaiser included health maintenance organizations, those are the HMOs, PPOs, point of service plans, PPOs, high deductible uh, health plans with savings options, those are the HDHPs and the SOs. Uh, in in uh, arriving at the average premium figures. So we've talked about these different kind of plan options, the PPOs typically being more expensive than the HMOs, and then the high deductible plans typically being less expensive in general due to the high deductibles. They're trying to get an average for this kind of calculation to figure this stuff out. It found that PPOs were the most common plan type ensuring 47%. They're kind of like the oldest traditional kind of plan with more flexibility to them. So that kind of makes sense. 47% of covered employees. You got the HDHPs. Those are the high deductible ones covering and the uh, SOs covering 31% of, of insured workers. So we've got the average employee premiums in 2020 employee share we got the family versus the individual the per year 5588 individual 1243 per month 466 family 104 uh, individual of course whatever employers spend on their workers health insurance leaves left money for wages and salaries so clearly when you get your your payment through your employer they might pay for some of the benefits for the health insurance but the reason they're paying the benefits is because that's a form of compensation you either would have got the health insurance if they're paying for for the health insurance and or they could be deducting it you could be paying for it as a deduction uh, but if they're paying for it then they could have given you that or they could have given you actually the money but uh, oftentimes it's beneficial for both of you to get some of these benefits because you might have tax benefits on it if you can get paid in some other way other than the, the money because you could have tax benefits. So workers are actually shouldering more of their premiums than these numbers show. In fact, one reason wages may not have risen much over the past two decades is because health costs have risen so much. So in other words, people, you might look at your W because of this relationship and because there's tax incentives and because there's a benefit to get your, your uh, these benefits as opposed to just wages, income cash from your employer it skews your your income calculation because if obviously if they cover the health insurance benefits that's part of your compensation and if the health insurance is going up then the company is going to have to pay you more to to pay for the health insurance which is basically a raise so at the same time because employees get to pay health insurance premiums with pre-tax dollars their burden can be less than that of people who buy their own insurance through the federal health insurance marketplace or their state's health insurance exchange. For the purpose of this article, marketplace and exchange are synonymous. So uh, which type of, of plan employees choose affects their premiums, deductibles, choice of health care providers and hospitals, and whether they can have a health savings account, an HSA, among many choices. So for families in which both spouses are offered employer health insurance, a careful comparison is critical. One plan may be much better deal than the other. So in other words, you might be saying, I got two people that work uh somewhere and one and you comparing the two employ the two healthcare plans if you you might be able to get the whole family covered under one plan or the other that's something you want to spend some time on possibly because it could have a significant impact uh one being much different and possibly much more beneficial than the other the partner whose plan is not used uh can can pocket the part of their paycheck that isn't withheld for medical coverage so or a couple with no children may decide that each should opt for their own company's plan as individuals. Coverage for couples rarely involves any any sort of discount. It's basically just a doubling of the individual rates. So individual health insurance premiums on the exchange. The federal insurance plan marketplace at healthcare.gov. You can check that out if you so choose, aka Obamacare is alive and well in 2021, despite years of its uh, political foes efforts to kill it. Uh, if offers plans from about uh, 175 uh, companies. So notice that, the, again, the, you've got this whole debate. We've, we've talked about this whole health insurance kind of uh, issue with the Affordable Care Act went into play. And then obviously when uh, President Trump went in, they were, were going to say they're going to repeal the report, the Affordable Care Act, but they didn't really repeal it. They kind of they kind of 
uh, made some changes like not being able to penalize people that don't have uh, health insurance, for example. And now you've got uh, the, the Biden administration, which you would, of course, think would be supportive of the Obamacare. And so and that's where we stand. So the saga continues with the health care laws and, and legislation. So some 12 states and the District of, Com of Columbia operate their own health exchanges, which basically mirror the federal site but focus on plans available to their residents. People in these areas sign up through their state rather than the federal exchange. So you typically want to go to your state first, I would think. Check it out there. If your state doesn't have that, then you can go to the federal. So each available plan offers four levels of coverage, each with its own price in order, uh, in order of price from highest to lowest. They are labeled platinum, gold, silver, and bronze. The benchmark plan is the second lowest cost silver plan available through the health insurance exchange in a given area and it can vary even within the state where you live. It's called the benchmark plan because it's the plan the government uses along with your income to determine your premium subsidy if any. So the subsidy if you buy on the marketplace would be basically possibly tax related, meaning they're going to try to lower the premium based on a tax credit calculation and then try to reconcile that all out when you file the tax return, which can be a little bit confusing, although beneficial to many people. The good news is prices are coming down a bit. According to the Centers for the Medicare and Medicaid Services, the CMS, the average premium for a second lowest cost silver plan decreased by 4% on healthcare.gov from 2019 to 2020 for a 27 year old. Six states experienced double digit percentage declines in average second lowest cost silver plan premiums for 27 year olds, including Delaware 20%, uh, Nebraska 15%, North Dakota 15%, Montana 14%, Oklahoma 14%, and Utah 10%. And from 2020 to 2021, the average second lowest cost silver plan decreased 3% from a 27 year old for a 27 year old. For states Iowa, Maine, New Hampshire, and Wyoming, uh, have average benchmark plan premiums increasing by 10% or more. The American Rescue Plan Act of 2021 also instituted a special enrollment period, SEP, for marketplace plans from February 15th to July 31st, 2021. For new consumers selecting plans through the healthcare.gov during this time, the average monthly plan premium fell 27% from $117 to $85 thanks to the expanded subsidies. It also helped to lower out-of-pocket costs. Deductibles fell almost 90% from $450 to $50. So digging deeper for price information, however, it's not a universally good news. For more details, we consulted the CMS 2020 Health Insurance Exchange Premium Landscape Issue Brief. It indicates that 27-year-olds buying silver plans saw their premiums increase by 10% or more in Indiana, Louisiana, and New Jersey. More importantly, it reveals that the percentage exchange don't tell us much about what people are actually paying. Quote, some of the states with the largest decreases still have relatively high premiums and vice versa, in quotes, the brief said. Quote, for example, while Nebraska's benchmark plan premiums decreased 15% from the prior year 2019 plan uh, to 2020, the average 27-year-old benchmark plan premiums is $583. On the other hand, while Indiana average uh, 2020 benchmark plan premium increased 13% from prior year 2019, the average 27-year-old prior year 2020 benchmark plan premiums is uh, 314. In 2021, that trend continues. The 2021 uh, edition of the CMS brief notes that, for example, while Wyoming's average benchmark plan premium decreased 10% from prior year 20 to prior year 21, the average 27-year-old prior year 2021 benchmark plan premiums is $648, the highest in the United States. How many 27 year olds can afford that kind of monthly premium? By contrast, New Hampshire's benchmark plan premium for a 27 year old is the lowest in the nation at 
$273.7. Uh, all of these numbers apply only to the 36 states whose residents buy plans through the federal exchange at healthcare.gov. Residents of California, Colorado, Connecticut, Idaho, Maryland, Massachusetts, Minnesota, Nevada, New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, uh, Rhode Island, Vermont, Wisconsin, and Washington, D.C. buy insurance through their state's exchange. So in other words, when you're looking at this exchange data information, you, look, you might want to look at the state first that you're in because that's the exchange for the state, but uh, your state might not have that, and then you'd go to the federal side of things. So we have more information. They got more information here on the average monthly benchmark plan premiums for a 27-year-old in plan year 2021 in healthcare.gov. So you can take a look at that by state if you're interested to see the state by state uh, breakout. Obviously, you know, some of these costs will be dependent on the state that you're in, which has a lot of these different factors that could be implied. There's a link down here. You could just take a look at uh, Investopedia. How much does health insurance cost by Amy Fontanille? So the importance of subsidies. The good news is that many who purchase marketplace plans will pay lower premiums through what the government calls advanced premium tax credits, otherwise known as subsidies. So basically they're, they're trying to say if you buy in the marketplace you might be able to get a credit a tax credit which you usually wouldn't be able to get the benefit from until you file your tax return getting the credit but they're going to try to re pre-calculate the credit when you get the premiums when you pay for the premium so they can lower the premiums by the credit which is basically an advanced payment kind of thing that you would get and then you'd have to reconcile that when you file the tax return so for taxes it could be confusing but obviously a credit subsidy could be beneficial at the same time. In 2019, 88% of the people who enrolled at healthcare.gov were eligible for advanced premium tax credits. What are these subsidies? They are credits the government applies to your health insurance premiums each month to make them affordable. So they lower the premium by the advanced credit, in essence, giving you money in the form of lower healthcare costs that you're not paying out of pocket but rather getting the benefit from that you then need to reconcile when you do your taxes. So essentially, the government pays part of your premium directly to your health insurance company and you're responsible for the rest. You can take your advanced premium tax credit in one of three ways, equal amounts each month, uh, more in some months and less in others, which is helpful if your income is irregular or as a credit against your income tax liability when you file your annual tax return, which could mean you owe less tax or get a bigger refund. So uh, if you're talking to a healthcare, you know, someone that's in the marketplace that's trying to set you up, they're probably going to try to try to set up the credit so that it takes a, a, an even amount after each month. But to do that, they got to calculate what they think your credit will be, which will be based on your income, which is difficult. So you might say, well, maybe I'll, I'll lower that amount or have more of a conservative or lower estimate, pay more of the premiums, and then possibly see if I can get more of that benefit of the credit when I file my tax return at the end of the year so that I, I don't end up in a situation where I owe money. Although the current administration, it's kind of funny, the current situation how is kind of incentivizing people to overestimate the the amount of of your estimate because uh, i believe that they actually waived the amount at least one time that if you overestimated meaning if if you were to say oh whoops i overestimated the amount of my credit and i got too much taken out of my premium because i didn't know my income was going to be as high as it was and then at the end of the year when you file the tax return you would think that you would have to pay that back but you can sometimes the government might say, well, we're going to waive. I mean, if they've in the past waived some of that kind of thing, which incentivizes people to overestimate on their credit when they put the premium in. So you might take that into consideration when you're doing your planning, but you can't really plan on that being the case. So the tax credit is designed to make premiums affordable based on your household size and income. Your credit is based on your estimated income for the year. So if your income or household size changes during the year, it's a good idea to update your information at healthcare.gov right away so your premium credits can be adjusted accordingly. So if your income changes, then again, the whole calculation that they did is going to be wrong because they're trying to do an estimate, which is hard because it's a tax projection, which gets quite complicated these days. So that way you won't have any unpleasant surprises at tax time, nor will you uh, pay higher premiums than you need uh, to throughout the year. Health insurance deductibles, what can you expect? 
On top of premiums, everyone who carries health insurance also pays a deductible. This means you pay 100% of your health expenses out of pocket until you have paid a predetermined amount. At that point, insurance uh, coverage kicks in and you pay a percentage of your bills with the insurer picking up the rest. Most workers are covered by a general annual deductible, which means it applies to most or all healthcare services. Here's how general deductibles varied in 2020. You got the $1,644 average annual deductible for a single worker employer plan, $2,295 annual, that's the average annual deductible if that single worker was employed by a small firm, $1,418 average annual deductible if that single worker was employed by a large firm. So they got the medical individual deductible qualifying health plan withholding subsidies from healthcare.gov. You got the bronze, silver, gold, and platinum, the tiers of the plans. So individuals who are eligible for cost sharing reductions, a type of federal subsidy that helps reduce out of pocket costs for healthcare expenses, such as deductibles and co-pays are responsible for deductibles as low as $115 for those with household incomes closest to the federal poverty level. A note on short-term plans. If you miss the annual enrollment period and don't have one of the reasons that qualify you for a SEP, uh, you, may, you may have to resort to buying a short-term health insurance plan that lasts anyone from three months to 364 days. So there's a window, in other words, when you can basically get the plan set up. If you're not in that window, then you still want to be covered during that short term time period might need a short term plan to do so. Because these plans tend to cost an average of 54% less than exchange plans, according to the Kaiser Family Foundation, you may also decide to opt for one. If you can't afford health insurance through your employer or on the exchange, maybe you're not eligible for a subsidy. A uh, buyer beware. Regulations vary by state, but in general, you can expect that pre-existing conditions won't be covered. Your application may not even uh, be accepted if you have certain health problems. So that pre-existing condition thing may not apply to the short-term plans if you need that. So be aware. Uh, other common exclusions include uh, maternity care, mental health services, and prescription drugs and be on the lookout for dollar limits on coverage. Short-term plans don't offer the same protection that exchange plans do and may not help enough or at, at all uh, when you need coverage for the most. So how do I find an affordable health insurance, you might ask. So group plans are generally cheaper than individual plans. So if you are eligible for one through your employer, your union, or some other association, that's the best bet in terms of coverage for their money. So the first place you'd want to typically look is like, do I have my employer? Do they provide health insurance plans? That might be the first place to look because you might get cheaper amounts due to the group insurance and possibly tax benefits. Does my spouse have access to an affordable plan? That might be the second or other place you would be comparing. Uh, if that's not the option, the public health marketplace established by the Affordable Care Act offers affordable health insurance for individuals. So you might go to the marketplace and you might first look at the state to see if your state has its own marketplace. If not in that state, then you might go to the national or federal. So in most of the U.S., you can sign up for the plan offered through the federal government via the healthcare.gov site. So you can check that out. However, 12 states run their own marketplace and residents sign up via their sites. So make sure you're checking out. Does your state have its own marketplace? If not, healthcare.gov. So how much is health insurance a month for a single person? It depends on a variety of factors ranging from your resident state to your age to the type of plan, workplace, or individual. Employer-sponsored plans average $622.50 a month with individual employees paying $105 of that, for example. Individual plans on the healthcare exchange range from an average of $648 to $273 monthly. What is the ACA uh, Health Insurance Marketplace? That's the Affordable Care Act. Established by the Affordable Care Act, ACA, the Health Insurance Marketplace is a, is a platform that offers medical insurance plans to individuals, families, and small businesses. 
14 states and the District of Columbia offer their own marketplaces, also known as exchanges, while the federal government manages a marketplace open to residents of other states. Marketplace plans are divided into four categories that range in cost and coverage. Though offered by private companies, all must meet certain criteria established by the state or federal government. So what's the bottom line? What's the bottom line, Doc? Am I going to die? How much am I going to pay? How much you'll pay for health insurance isn't a number you can guess. So clearly we're going to get, it depends here. It's affected by many factors, few of which you can control, though maybe there's a case for leaving Wyoming in search of a cheaper insurance. So we've got the high cost, the high state uh, cost for the health insurance in Wyoming, apparently. So if you're buying a plan through healthcare.gov, you can use the government's tool for establishing which subsidies you'll qualify for. So in other words, you might first look for your insurance if you can get one from your employer or your spouse's employer because you might get the benefits or better coverage in those instances. And or if you can't, then you might be looking at the marketplace, which if you're in a state that has a state marketplace, you might go there. If not, you might go to the healthcare.gov marketplace and continue your research. If you're buying insurance through your employer, review your open enrollment information as soon as it's available so you have plenty of time to review your options attend any information sessions and use any comparison tools your employer offers to help you pick the most valuable plan you can afford.